Hi guys, in this video today I'm going to show you how you can make more money. Now it's not age appropriate, you don't need to be 19, 21, 22 years old to use these tips. And today look, I'm not trying to sell you anything, I'm not going to sell you a program. Today if you listen to this video right until the end, every single tip that I'm going to give you is easy and it's just honest information that you can do as a teenager to make more money this year. Now. If you want more videos like this, don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you like this video, don't forget to drop a like and also leave a comment at the bottom uh, with other tips and tricks uh, that you have done as a teenager to make more money this year. So number 10 today is wash windows. So look, washing windows uh, is actually a quite easy way to make money. Now, don't be fooled, there is a bit of a uh, process to it and it will take some practice. Maybe you'll need to uh, Google or look up WikiHow on how to clean a window properly. Um, but yeah, it's quite easy. And look, you can start by doing uh, your own home, your parents' place, okay? And then from there, you can go to your, uh, you know, your auntie and uncle's place. Um, and, and then from then on, you, look, you can uh, be creative. You knock on people's doors, knock on your neighbor's doors. And the main thing to, uh, to remember is to be, um, to be diligent and to do a really good job. If there's one thing that I know about business is if you do a really good quality job, you're a nice guy, you're honest, um, work will come your way and your business will grow and grow and grow. Um, I, I heard a story of a guy, he started a uh, washing window business when he was just 12 years old um, and that just grew and grew and grew and now he's around my age and he's He's got a, uh, a washing window business that makes a uh, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, obviously, he's grown from washing his mum and dad's place, uh, but it's, it's actually quite amazing. He's gone to uh, bigger corporations. He's washing hospital windows and things like that. So to set up, all you really need is a squeegee. Now you can find these things at uh, at your local uh, hardware store or um, or shop. Uh, quite easy to find and to buy and quite cheap as well. You need a bucket, some warm water, well, doesn't have to be warm, and uh, some soap. Um, look, you probably could use a ladder, but maybe don't go that far yet. Uh, just start with doing the first story windows if you can. Um, you know, you don't want to be uh, getting too dangerous there if you're not exactly sure what you're doing. Okay, so for number nine today is to buy and sell and repair mobile phones. Now, Look, you can, buy, uh, you can buy your mobile phones off your friends um, and you can flip them and sell them on eBay or on Gumtree or whatever service it is that you use online uh, for, a, for a small profit. But even better, to get, uh, to get better profits, uh, you can start to buy phones that are slightly broken that you know you can fix. Now look, you don't want to buy a phone that's completely trashed and you're sort of unsure of how to fix it. But if it's got, for instance, a broken screen uh, and you know how to fix that, this is a great place to start because you could say, first you could start off with your friends and go, hey, look, I noticed that you had a broken phone, uh, phone there, Daniel. Um, do you want me to fix that for you? I can fix that for 40, 50 bucks. I'm not sure how much it costs to replace a screen. Um, is that yeah sure so you fix that and uh, or you know you might be walking uh, waiting in line to uh, to buy something and, and you notice that someone's got a broken screen phone uh, broken screen and you say look hey I can fix that for you if you like uh, and this is how much it'll cost would you like me to do it you look come over and I'll fix this uh, I'll fix that for you you know or if you know how to repair a broken battery so I guess the most important thing is to make sure that you know how to fix the phone before you take on the task but uh, yeah, I know a lot of people that, um, that have just bought and flipped phones, uh, d not even necessarily repaired them, they just bought them cheap and then they've sold them at a, at a better price. So uh, yeah, it's definitely something that you can do. Okay, so number eight today is digitizing family photos and albums. Now, look, you can start this again with your family or your uncles and aunties and you could say to them, look, I noticed that you've got lots of photos there from years and years ago that are in these albums. Um, you know, it'd be such a pity to if someone robbed the place, I mean, who's going to rob family photos, but uh, if the house burnt down and look, all those memories, all those beautiful memories that you've had with your kids and your, and your kids, kids could all be lost and forgotten. Why don't you let me take those photos 
and scan them and upload them into the cloud or onto a USB stick for you so that you've got them easily accessible and hey, you could probably then use that USB then to go and uh, go to your local uh, shop and you know print up some really nice canvas photos and that for you. You could actually you could probably offer that to them as well and just say, look, as an extra, um, here, look, go through these photos. Tell me tell me which ones you'd like to get blown up, and I'll blow them up for you. I'll put them on a canvas and you can hang them up in your home. So. There's no end there really uh, for that. So yeah, start with your uncles and aunties and I'm sure the word will spread out and just, you know, you could put uh, you know, a, a small ad in the paper or something like that uh, or uh, you know, something on the notice board in your local supermarket and just say, look, I'm digitizing fo family photo albums. Don't let your, uh, your memories of your loved ones disappear in a, fam uh, in a fire or a flood. And uh, yeah, you can go from there. So all you really need for that is a scanner, a computer, and you can upload it to the cloud or a USB stick or something like that. So yeah, definitely important is to do that upsell of the canvas. That's actually a great idea. So uh, keep that one in mind. Okay guys, so number seven today is editing videos for YouTubers. Now look, this is not something that you can just do, you know, off the cuff. You really need to, th uh, to have some practice behind this and be a good video editor. But maybe you're one of those kids that's just really good at video editing. You've got a knack for it. You know, you've done some video projects at school. You really know what you're doing. Um, I would still suggest that uh, you Google into it, look into it, and maybe get some practice before you uh, start doing projects and asking to do projects for other people and to make money. So this could be a really good uh, stepping stone if you wanted to be a YouTuber. If that's your goal is to be a uh, famous YouTuber and uh, you know, learning how to edit videos could be a really great stepping stone to that. Um, so look, you know, the real main thing here is I want to focus on is to get some practice. Um, so whether that's editing um, you know, your family videos or things like that. Um, you know, start off small, get really good at it, ask your family and your friends, go, look, I've edited this video, what do you think? Is it any good? Do you think I've got a bit of a knack for this? You know, just say to them, look, be honest. And uh, yeah, so then you can start from there and you can, you know, put out your feelers and start editing videos for YouTubers. And that's one thing to remember is that YouTubers are actually putting out, uh, putting out their videos for other people to edit. Most very famous YouTubers don't edit their own videos. They hire someone to do all the filming and all the editing for them. Okay, so number six today is to do junk mail runs. So you know those things that you get in the mailbox and it's a flyer and it's a, you know, a, a magazine or whatever that has all the items for sale. It says, uh, you know, whether it's super cheap auto, it's an auto place, an auto barn, or it's a supermarket trying to say, look, we sell ham for $3. So you could actually go out and do the junk mail run. So I remember doing this as a kid. Uh, you sign up to this and basically the junk run people would send huge piles of uh, junk mail and then what you would need to do is you would need to sort, all, sort it all out, put it all together, fold it, uh, you know, stack it into a backpack and then you're off, you know. So you, if you're lucky, you might be able to do your local community, your local block. Um, so yeah, you just get on your bike, uh, ride around and uh, start putting junk mail into junk uh, in, into people's mailboxes. Now, look, it's, uh, it's it's not great money, but it is still good if you want to make money as a teenager. It's still a great tip, and look, it's great exercise as well. It gets you outside, and look, you know, um, and, and you could do two things at once. You know, like get the music in, start listening to your favourite podcast while you're doing it. You know, hit uh, two birds with one stone, so to speak. So. Yeah, junk mail is a great, uh, a great way to make money as a teenager. Um, so don't forget to do your local junk mail run. Okay, so number five today is mow your neighbor's lawn. Now you'll be thinking, uh, duh, I already do that. It's a quite a simple one, I get it. But it's something that I did as a kid. I used to, um, it started off that uh, this old lady next door said, look, I can't mow the lawn myself. This is the lawnmower, um, you know, here's the fuel. Um, can you cut this lawn for me? And she lived in a unit, so it was a very small backyard, but I remember I used to make uh, 20 bucks, and this was probably 10, 15 years ago when I was a teenager. So, um, and that was quite good money back then. So yeah, mowing lawns, don't rule it out. It's a great way to make money. So first of all, you could uh, do your parents' place, get some pocket money there, 
ask your neighbours obviously. What you'll need though is a working lawnmower. So hopefully your family uh, has one of those um, or even if your neighbour, you could ask your neighbour who has a lawn, say look, I can cut your lawn but do you have a lawnmower? I'll use yours. Um, you know, and you could expand your business much like, uh, much like washing the windows. Uh, you can expand your business, you know, get, make a flyer up, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy, just cut a piece of paper, put your details on it, whack it into people's mailboxes and say, look, my name's such and such, my name's Danny, um, I'm cutting lawns, uh, this is how much I'm going to do it for, you know, yada yada, or you could make up a flyer and put it onto uh, your local supermarket uh, pin board. So there's definitely uh, ways you could do that and, and make a, a good living out of it even as well. So, Okay, so make sure you stick to the end because I've saved the best tips till last. Okay, so number four today is to pick fruit uh, or work on an orchard, uh, a winery or a farm. So this is quite an enjoyable one that, uh, that I've enjoyed in the past when I was a teenager. Um, whether it's picking berries, picking grapes, uh, picking fruit. Um, why it's so enjoyable is I used to love listening to audiobooks and to music while I used to pick the fruit. So um, yeah, so it, it's, 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 qu it's quite a good way to make money as a teenager. So how do you get to these, how, how do you find a job like this? Um, well, what I did is I just went online, I found a place that was local, uh, a place that I liked, and I just emailed them or I rang them up and say, hey look, um, uh, you know, I'm 14, 15 years old, I'm really keen to pick some fruit, to do some work on the farm, whatever, whatever that may be. And you know, these, place, these places will jump uh, on that opportunity. They're looking for cheap labour. Now, I'm sorry that it is cheap labour, but look, hey, it's your first job, you're making money, it's better than making no money. Uh, so these places will jump on that opportunity. And there you, and there you go, you got yourself a job uh, picking fruit. And look, um, to make it even more enjoyable, why don't you ask your school friend, uh, one of your mates and say, look man, I'm going to go pick some fruit, you want to do it with me? And you can walk and, chalk, uh, walk and talk and do it together. So it's, it's quite a good one. All right guys, we've only got three more tips to go and I've saved the last three till last. Okay, so tip number three today is to sell soda cans at your school. Now, this is a funny one. I remember this kid at school called Kiron and he used to come to school with hardly any books in his bag <laughs> and he used to make his bag an esky full of Coke cans. So what he would do, he'd have his bag and at the very bottom, he'd, uh, he'd put a towel at the bottom and he would buy a 30 pack of Coke cans from the supermarket at a really, really cheap price. He would then stuff his bag full of these Coke cans right up till the top. And before he did that, he made sure that they were in the fridge the night before, so they were very nice and cold. He also had some uh, ice bricks in the freezer, which then he also put that in his bag. And when he, when he used to hop off the bus, his bag was so heavy and you could see Kieran walking down into school with this huge heavy bag. But I'm gonna give it to the guy. He made some good money. He used to make 20, 30 bucks a day uh, by selling cans at school. And the kids used to love it. So, you know, you'd be in class and you'd be really thirsting for a can of Coke and you say, hey, Kieran, got a can of Coke? <laughs> and he would, yeah, yeah, you know, under the table, give you a can of Coke. You'd pass him whatever it was, two bucks. Um, then uh, he also then used to upsell, uh, he used to buy all different kinds of candy bars or lollies or treats that were popular as well. So find out what's popular first, what kids like, what sells really well. Um, so you can buy, and, and the real important thing is to buy these things at the supermarket supermarket in uh, in bulk packs um, you know you know just in, in normal packets you see so um, then you can sell them instead of selling them for you know what they're actually worth 15 cents you could sell them to the kids for 50 cents and kids will easily part their money to have that treat accessible to them in class so uh, this is a great tip um, you know I'd really love to see where Kiron is now uh, he's my age 32 He's probably a multi-millionaire now, the way that he used to do business at school. Um, so yeah, that's a good one. Keep that one in mind. Okay, so number two today is to change motor oil. Now you might be thinking, what, hang on, I'm a teenager. I'm not going to be doing, you know, I don't know mechanics. Well, look, to be honest, look it up. Look it up on Google or WikiHow. 
Changing uh, oil on the car is actually a very, very easy process. You know, you've got your engine, basically you've got a plug at the bottom, which you unwind, um, you know, and, and there's a, a, a cap at the top of the engine, which you can also take off, which helps the uh, engine oil drain into a bucket. Something, uh, you really want to be able to learn how to do this first, maybe ask your dad or your uncle about how to change oil on a car. Um, really, when you're doing this for other people though, you really want to make sure you've got a good setup, a good bucket, some good towels and things like that because you don't want to be spilling oil on the driveway. It really makes a mess and uh, people aren't going to be happy about that. But look, you could charge good money um, uh, changing someone's oil. Some people don't know how to do it. It could be an old lady or an uncle or auntie that's just not that way inclined. Um, you could help them change the oil. And also, look, don't be pushy, but you could also upsell and say, look, um, I notice your car's a bit dirty inside. Do you want me to vacuum the inside of your car? Do you have a vacuum or do you want me to just do a quick clean up? Maybe have an air refresher and say, look, I'm selling these air refreshers for two bucks. You know, they cost you 50 cents, but you're selling for two bucks. Um, you know, you, you could offer to wash their car, fill up their wiper fluid, just little things that you know that you can do. You know, you don't want to be changing, um, you don't want to be changing things that you can't uh, actually do and make a mess on the car, right? Um, so yeah, changing oil in a car, um, quite easy, uh, ask your dad or your uncle how to do it, and uh, yeah, it's a great way to make money as a teenager. Okay, so the last but not least, number one tip for making money as a teenager is create and start your own podcast. Now, I know this is gonna be a little bit harder than the rest, but, uh, and it might, uh, might uh, ask of you and your brain uh, for its uh, creative juices, but look, creating a podcast is actually quite easy. Um, and some of the great, uh, some of the you know really good podcasts make ad ad revenue of a million, two million dollars a year um, for you know companies that want to put their ads on your podcast because it's popular, it's authentic, they want to associate you with you and your brand, uh, and that's how you make money is through ad revenue. Now, when creating the podcast, you really want to make sure that it's something that you're passionate about, something that you love, and that you can talk for days about, and something that you're just really knowledgeable about. Uh, why that is, is that'll make sure that you're doing the podcast on a regular basis. Um, it's also something that you love, so it's easy to talk about. So that's sort of a no-brainer. So yeah, you could create your own podcast, maybe interview kids at school that have similar interests, whatever that may be, whether it be cars, um, you know, uh, talking about celebrities, whatever it may be, that's something that you could do. So yeah, making a podcast is uh, the last and final tip. And uh, yeah, so... Thank you for today and I really hope that these tips will help you as a teenager to make more money um, to save for whatever it is that you want to save or if you want to invest as a teenager. My hand, you know, my hat goes off to you if you've already started investing now as a teenager. It's the best time to start because of compound growth. So if you've liked this video, please subscribe for more videos like this and drop a like and remember to add a comment um, because I'd love to hear your ideas about how you are, or how you are making money as a teenager.